Hola. I am Mariana Farina. I am a lawyer with a specialization in uh, uh, health law and a master degree in public policies and health by the Osvaldo Cruz Foundation in Brazil and also a PhD in public health uh, from the uh, Fiocruz Health School in Brazil. I am enthusiastic and really passionate by the topic of integration, especially South America. And this was my uh, thesis, my PhD thesis was on this subject. I've been working for UNASUR for uh, five and a half years, for the ISACs for five and a half years. And since the inception of the ISACs until the end of 2015, and since 2016, I am working for the PAHO in Washington, working in the Department of Family, Gender, uh, Life Course. So today, we will address the specificity of health diplomacy in the South American context, with a special focus on the exercise of health diplomacy and the role of player in global health of UNASUR and the Health Council. The first question that it is important to do is to understand that the topic of health, although, although it has been largely since the Pan-American Health Organization is set up at the beginning of the 20th century, health and the ministries have uh, been in close contact, but always in a manner considered as a soft power, an area in which the real diplomatic relations and foreign affairs are not as important as in other, as other areas where uh, trade, war, and so on. At the beginning of the 21st century, this uh, experiences some change. But it is important to understand the force and the relevance, not only for the health sector and for the ministries of health, but for everything involving international relations and foreign affairs of a country and more of a region in relation to the rest of the world and other players. The force that health may have, so here we have a small part of the Oslo Declaration of the year 2007 that says this change, when this change is generated, understanding that health is a privileged space for diplomacy, an important place for foreign relations, and they can create far more than initially was thought. So we see here a series of uh, circles with some key concepts. These concepts are fundamental and relevant. In, th in this course, as, um, certainly you have seen some of them and you co will continue to see others, to understand the role of health diplomacy and how players in health governance move all their movements to understand international health, the changes, and the elements that make uh, global health a very an arena with multiple players and interaction spaces. Health diplomacy has a very important force, power, and can create four states and countries, and also four regions, and this is important. Mm, um, gains in terms of sovereignty, decision, domestic and foreign, in relation to health, but also related to trade and other human rights that are interrelated with the area of health. These are important concepts that uh, we will find the discussion of health in a context of regional integration, especially South American. 
some uh, important issues that we have to understand in order to have a concept of the topic is that there is a new agenda. The new agenda of diplomacy um, is not restricted to the question of war, trade, and the topics that were traditionally traditionally considered as the hard powers of foreign relations. There is complexity in the topics, but also in the players that start to interact in this arena of uh, diplomacy as a whole. The other topic that it is uh, what the Oslo Declaration brings to us is the understanding that health may provide benefits to the countries beyond health itself. The relationship with health, the discussion with health, supporting health programs for a certain area may bring a country an increase in the political reputation, improving relationship with other states in other areas also that are stricter when states have deficits and when health can become uh, an area through which countries may be closer. And as we see, health is becoming more and more globalized together with trade and the relation between people, transportation, and so on. The area of health in the international relations may be a, an excellent vehicle to get states nearer, especially in cases when they have complex relationships and health may be this conciliating space. The other topic that is important is to understand who are the diplomats of health, how to work health diplomacy, And in order to guarantee that the interests of a country and of a region are present in the national agendas and also in the international agendas, in addition, the commitments made globally or in the continent or regionally have to be enforced at the national level because many times this is not so because there are other interests another arena or forums where other kinds of negotiations will take place. For example, the um, World Trade Organizations that will many times hinder the health agenda agreed in global spaces, and then we see that they cannot be enforced. Perhaps there is no interest. So the work of the health diplomat is not only in the global space or continental space, in the space of negotiations, but also going back to his or her own country and manage resolution and commitments, ensuring that these commitments are included in the national agendas and implemented and bring benefits to the population and the country. And also, for all this to happen, It is very important and fundamental that international offices in the area of health have to be strong with qualified people, being able to work with all these spaces that are involved in health diplomacy in order to progress in the challenges that we find. So there are many concepts in diplomacy of health. You have seen some of them throughout the course, I am not going to give a concept, but I will bring elements for you to understand that independently of the negotiation and multiple negotiations, I will say, because there are several spaces, this is the second element where the spaces are multi multiplied. Not only we don't have only a global space, although it is the most privileged one for the XSA of health diplomacy. But it's not the only one, and those spices are multiple, and there are also a multiplicity of players, which is an element 
that with globalization, with global health, we have to think about who are those players, where they are, how do we relate to them and uh, achieve benefits in the negotiations of each country and each member in the negotiation is carrying out. So spaces are multiple and start with the community and then we go to the national, regional, continental and the global space. In the Americas, we also have a very important negotiation space which are the mm, mm, steering agencies of the PAHO with a lot of commitment and they mm, obtain resolutions and decisions. In Latin America, specifically in South America, we have the regional commitments and regional spaces for health diplomacy. For example, the GDC 11 Mercosur, the spaces of the Indian Comunica, the South American UNASUR health councils, and also the national spaces that may be binational bordering but also at the level of the community, when we understand that civil society also is part of the health diplomacy and the civil society will also uh, very strongly at the level of community relationship with patients um, and they are going to work with the legislative power and the executives at the level of their cities and districts or municipalities, if you wish, in order to enforce their rights and the commitments at the level of a municipal district and community too. So as we see, there are multiple players, the natural players in international relations are the states, of course, and they will represent the national interests, their own interests, but international organizations, United Nations, the regional integration mechanisms, the funds, partnerships, and so on, each more and more they are present and they have a role in global health governance, acting very strongly in health diplomacy. Then we have the non-state players. In this case, you have seen, you have heard, of course, to see the FENSA and the relationship that has to be regulated. And it is necessary for them and for states to interact with the non-state players, not only foundations and the academy, but also with the private sectors to try to find solutions through the health problems. And finally, the populations, civil society, communities, professional associations of patients, families, clubs, and so on. It is a space, therefore, that has multiple levels and multiple players that are interacting in health governance and also as players in health diplomacy. How is it that we see the mechanism in the region that is the topic of this class as regards health diplomacy and health governance? These mechanisms we, as time goes by, we have new ones, but also they are changing the dynamics of how these mechanisms interact and they defend the rights or the interests of their regions in other global spaces or other global opportunities. The mechanisms of regional integration, we have seen some of them in our region but we can also refer to other mechanisms like the European Union and the African Union, and sometimes they have um, formalized um, activities, but they start formally or informally, they have a central role. Why is it that they have a central role? Because these spaces, as we will see, are privileged. 
for the defense of the interests of countries that many times alone by themselves do not have a voice in global spaces and do not have a voice in continental spaces. So the inter regional integration mechanisms will have the ability for these states that historically are living a sort of manipulation or influence from the other states' agenda and other players in their own policies and in the definition of their own policies, these countries may find in these regional integration mechanisms a privileged space to make their own decisions for consensus and for the common attitude vis-a-vis -vis global spaces. Therefore, which are the advantages, as we said, in regional integration in the diplomacy of health. Regional integration strengthens other countries, large ones and small ones. The European Union has uh, their common position in the um, World Health Assemblies, and many times they manifest through the voice of the regional integration mechanisms because countries understand that, understand that regional integration has benefits and ha, is more forceful than the states themselves. But regional integration has an advantage and a benefit for the countries that in many cases saw their domestic policies influenced by other countries. These countries, for example, in Latin America, throughout history have had, either through other players, other states, other international organizations, they have had their health policies many times influenced by those players without the domestic ability to define them, but they just only respond to these external demands. So for those countries, regional integration may be very beneficial in the sense of strengthening those states that do not utter their voice alone, but as a block. So they, are, they feel stronger vis-a-vis -vis other country, vis-a-vis -vis other players in governance, in global health governance spaces. So UNASUR and the integration of South America. We have to understand that integration proposing by UNASUR is not the economic integration. It doesn't seek uh, to have uh, supranational entities. The work and the UNASUR integration process is based in the domestic diplomacy that is within the block. There are negotiations, consensus is achieved, and debates in order to find common problems requiring joint solutions in order to strengthen and regulate the integration process of UNASUR. Therefore, this broadens or at least tries to broaden the degree of autonomy of the region, the South American region, vis-a-vis -vis the intervention of foreign agents through the strengthening of national democracies and also with a common attitude vis-a-vis -vis other blocs, other players in the global arena. This is important. This is important to see it at the level of health, the health council and other instances so UNASUR, uh, so that progress was uh, process of integrations in order to strengthen the region vis-a-vis -vis the threats and the influence of foreign players, UNASUR starts to act in global health 
governance beginning with health diplomacy. And this is important in relation with other mechanisms that we have seen in the region, America Sur, the Andean community, and that started many years before Nassau. But they had not understand their role and their characteristic. Uh, they didn't work or act as a player of health diplomacy in global and continental spaces, as UNASU did during uh, the years it has been in existence. So what did this, what is the outcome of all of this? The UNASU as a player in health diplomacy, a recognition in the South American region. South America, throughout the years, recognizes or is recognized uh, by other countries in the elective bodies of the PAHO as an important, relevant player, something that will fight for the interests of the region and of the countries that make up the block. How is it that the story, uh, that the story goes? What is the what is UNASUR, the Health Council, the ministers, as regards those spaces? Is it restricted to the World Health Assembly? Is it restricted to the steering bodies? No, it's broader than that. And we have several examples. For example, you may see that there were um, activities in international conferences, specific uh, topics, medicine regulation, human resources, and spaces created by WHO as the um, global conference from the promotion of health on the determinants of health in 2011, where UNASUR gathers as a block and the council acts with an only voice to defend the interest of the South American region. And the experiences that we have um, are very successful indeed where UNASUR was able to guarantee, to ensure interest that didn't appear in the documents or were discussed. And since the activity in health diplomacy as a play in this diplomacy, the Health Council and the member states are able to achieve important results to guarantee the interest and the specific needs of South America. Obviously, the World Assembly is the most privileged forum and the most official one as re referring to uh, global governance in health. And that is really where Runa Sir has every year the common positions and it acts as a player in, of health diplomacy. But we are referring about, we are speaking about the ministers and the health council. But UNASUR has a lot of spaces. The health council has many spaces. And there are many players that are also important and relevant for to strengthen UNASUR so that the relations with other players also are stronger and for her diplomacy to be conducted in the best manner as possible in order to bring benefits to the region. First of all, we have the uh, Health Council with the Council of Ministers, the Pro Tempore Presidency uh, Networks, and the ISACs, which is a fundamental player that is supporting the whole structure to make relationships, uh, guaranteeing the exchange of knowledge, the building uh, of knowledge too, and also supporting the interaction of the health counseling, both inside and outside the Nasur. This is a very important role of the SACs that has guaranteed space and the recognition within and also outside the UNESCO structure. And you then, we then have all the other councils 
which is an important benefit, especially in the era of sustainable development goals when the um, health agenda are seen through, not only through the exercise in the ministries of health. UNASUR has this space when there is a possibility of dialogue with other councils making negotiation possible, domestic negotiation, and the understanding that there are other spaces in which negotiations take place, diplomatic negotiations that may create gains and results that will impact health policies and decisions. And the country members, we know that the area of health diplomacy is not only an area of health, and not only an area of diplomacy. It's a field where these two areas or sectors meet. And finally, the missions in Geneva the dialogue between missions, the understanding that the representatives of countries in the Geneva missions and also in their embassies and consulates in some countries, for example, New York or Washington, where we have other international organizations and also the representatives of the countries in the OAS, all these sectors are important. The relationship of the audience with all those players that represent the interests vis-a-vis of the international organizations, all this is fundamental to be to support the strengthening of the decisions and the interests of the country and the region. And outside the structure, we have the other international organizations where countries, in the case of UNESCO, many countries or all the countries, are part of other mechanisms, CARICOM, MERCOSUR, Indian community. And they also have other types of commitments. That means to say it is important to have health diplomacy commitments. So the governance of all these spaces has to be present and always have to be able to have this ability because if this doesn't happen, challenges grow bigger and bigger and bigger and the ability of states to discuss in those spaces goes down, is reduced. The PAHO, uh, the continental level, the WHO, uh, and the importance of dialogue with those players for the resolution of common problems. The Health Council has two manners to act. One are the technical uh, coalitions when we have the leaders, ministers of health, the high um, technical groups, networks, and the ISACs. And there we have the knowledge is produced, evidence, strengthening abilities, and exchange is improved as regards the best practices. The ability of the region becomes stronger so that the region may take all this knowledge, best practices, and this exchange among countries within those structures, which are very technical ones, they may take them to the political decision where they can create or not consensus, common positions. And this, there is a very important element, which is the coordinating committee, which is the bridge that takes all this all that refers to the discussions and technical debates. And they take it, those needs and those problems or the possible solutions to the Minister of Health so they may be able to generate decisions, positions, and express politically so that they are able to go further and to progress to other states outside the Health Council. And here we 
see as those interaction of this exercise of diplomacy of health will generate the agendas which are the agendas that we have to enforce, the commitments that are made that need to become policies, programs. As we will see today, how is it that they have influence in the others? As you see in this diagram, diagram we have a global, a continental, and a regional agenda. And here we have on a soon, but also there are sub-regional agendas that will uh, uh, impact, that have an impact, uh, CARICOM, MERCOSUR, and so on. And we have the national agendas in addition. And what we see is that we have a very important influence of global and continental agendas in the regional agenda and in the national agendas than we think. That means to say, today we are more reactive to what comes from abroad than what we really feel when we work in the constructions based on needs, based on the problems that we have to face in each country and in the region as a whole. That means to say, the impact that regional problems have of each one of the 12 member countries of UNASUR regarding the continental and the global agenda today is uh, very soft. We need to strengthen it. We we need to strengthen UNASUR's capacity as an agent of the health diplomacy to the extent that these countries may take common positions and understand the problems that they have to face together and to go further on programs in order to have influence on the continent and a global agenda. And then in the national agenda, that is why the exercise of health diplomacy through the regional integration mechanisms is so beneficial, is so relevant, not only for the region, but for the countries themselves because the countries have to face other players, other stronger countries, either economically or politically, or international players, and also non-state players like the private markets. Many times these countries find difficulties in facing those agendas and have an influence on the global agendas and continental agendas. But when they are together, they become stronger and they they have more ability to act on those agendas. So what is the strength? How can we build and express that strength of acting jointly in the arena of governance and global health in the diplomacy of health as a regional bloc? That will guarantee our health sovereignty as countries and as a region. It is there that the exercise of the diplomacy of health and the Health Council of UNASUR may have the possibility to have solutions or to find solutions for common problems and also to benefit individually from the results that derive the result from this exercise. Which is this sovereignty? How is it that we have them stronger at the same time. This happens because whole sovereignty is expressed either domestically and to the exterior. They complement each other. They have a sort of feedback to each other. In the domestic dimension that we have, to the extent that the state or the region may have influence, may may have more negotiation capacity vis-a-vis other players and defend those interests. This makes the 
state able to define their own policies, its own health agenda, based not on the uh, obligation from abroad, from an international agenda, but on the need that we have in each country, in the problems that appear in our countries, in the responses that have to be given to the population and the health needs of the population. To the extent that the foreign capacity becomes stronger through regional integration, uh, through UNASUR, and its um, procedures as a player in health diplomacy to the extent to the extent that UNASUR becomes stronger in defending the interests of countries vis-a-vis -vis other players, either transnational of the market, I other countries or other type of interests that are not the interests of this region, to the extent that this takes place countries become stronger because they are able to define their own policies and not only react to the agendas that come from abroad. That is why the exercise of health diplomacy, the uh, activities within global governance is important and fundamental for the region and for each one of the member countries. So health diplomacy establishes a regional mechanism of resistance and also reinforce independence and autonomy in health of the states to define their own policies. And finally, thinking about the future, how is it that we are going to go forward? The first thing that we have to think about is that if UNASUR doesn't uh, strengthen its ability to act, then countries get weaker. And also the ability of the countries to make their own decisions becomes weaker. And also the capacity of negotiation with the markets, with industry, with funds, uh, banks, the ability of the country is weakened. So it is important to strengthen UNASO's capacity in order to have influence in the arena of global health. So the interest of each member country can be maintained and preserved in order to define their own policies, in order to continue getting stronger and stronger. Which are the three elements that we need today to continue and strengthen that uh, capacity of UNASUR? First of all, the first of all is what is what we are doing, strengthening capacities human capacities of each one of the areas of the countries, but we have to go further because UNASUR is made up of 12 member countries in the global arena. Perhaps this is not enough. We have to interact with other blocks. We have to find in some spaces similarities with the European Union or Africa or with the BRICS in other cases with CARICAM or with uh, COMISCA, with other spaces that are also present in those blocks, and also with individual countries, the European countries, uh, northern countries, that we have many, ta many topics in common. We have to go further. We have to interact as a block, as a strong block, and also adding more more. And we have to formalize UNASUR's representation in, in other spaces. Uh, also in the steering bodies of the PAHO and in all the spaces because the representation and the activities of UNASUR in UNASUR is informal. So we have to formalize in order to strengthen UNASUR and the countries of the bloc. And finally, we have to maintain a regional agenda in the area of health in UNASUR. May not be a plan. Uh, the agenda has to have consensus. 
in meetings of um, identification of problems and the ability to go uh, further together. If this doesn't happen, if UNASUR loses the ability to interact, come to come to consensus, and doesn't strengthen, this may create for our region or for the countries of uh, South America a uh, weakening vis a vis the international agendas and influences. If we have today little influence regarding the global agenda and promise to negotiate with international players, if UNASUR is not stronger, it becomes more difficult. So we will not uh, have a proposal as a country or as a, or as a region. But UNASUR centrally will continue to progress, and this course will be highly useful for to strengthen capacities and health diplomacy becomes more and more an exercise, a daily exercise of diplomacy of health, not only by the players, ministers, or the heads of international offices, but interacting with all the other players which are part of this global governance in health, strengthening the interests and needs of the region. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope this class has been useful to you. And here you have some references, so you may, this is a bibliography. Lots of luck to you all in the course and uh, for UNASUR too. Thank you very much. Mucha suerte en, en este curso y mucha fuerza para...